Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's watch some Lisa Eldridge Berry Lipsticks. I feel like there's a ton more pinks, a ton more reds. Some of these shades you might have already seen if you've been watching the rest of my lip swatches by Color Family. If you're curious, I will link all the ones I've done in the description bar down below, but I've done reds, pinks, and nudes. If you've watched all those others, you'll notice that some of these lipsticks are in other videos as well, but I feel like depending on what you have them paired with, they can lean one way or the other. And I think on top of it, it's interesting to see them compared next to other lipsticks. All right, so I am gonna start with a True Velvet Lipstick. This one is Blush Lightly. I love this shade. I feel like it's just enough without being too much on my fair skin tone. I've seen it on other people with richer skin tones and it looks stunning. This looks good on everybody. Here is Blush Lightly. It's a beautiful shade. It, it can lean a little rosy pink. It can work beautifully to bring color to the face without being overwhelming. I think that there's a, a beautiful subtlety and distinction to this color where it's not too pink, where it's not too cool toned. There is, interestingly enough, I feel like a little bit of warmth to this. I don't understand like the the alchemy that goes into creating these shades. I feel like there's a little bit of magic because these shades are unlike others in my collection. I think I, oh, this one looks very similar to, and I'll swatch it next to a Lisa Eldridge lipstick. And there's something that, there's a, a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more uniqueness in the tones of the lipsticks. It does at times look like a straight up mauve, but then you swatch it next to the rest of the mauves in my collection and it's real different. This is one of my most reached for true velvets. This is Velvet Blush. This was a lipstick that everybody fell in love with but asked for a lighter version, hence the blush lightly. Let me put this on for you. Here is blush compared to blush lightly. This has a distinctly deeper, almost like blackberry lean to it. And I'm not saying that it's a blackberry, but there, there is something in here that makes it deeper because side by side, they don't look that different. But on the lip, they look so different. Uh, the formulation, of course, is the same. It's elegant, it's fabulous. But this color, there's a little bit of almost like an eggplant or aubergine kind of coolness to it, but it's earthy at the same time. I don't know what it is. I feel like Lisa has this incredible ability to find just the right undertone to create a shade that I have not seen on a lipstick before. Now, I'm not telling you I've tried all lipsticks. I haven't, there's too many, but I feel like we see a lot of the same shades. Sometimes reds have a similar look to them. Sometimes pinks will have a similar look to them. Sometimes mauves will have a similar look to them. But the reason I reach for these lipsticks over and over again is not just because of the formulations or the elegant packaging or that they're by Lisa, but it's because the colors are so unique and different from other things in my collection. And this shade right here in blush is absolutely stunning. This next lipstick is new. It's one of the luxuriously lucent lipsticks, and this one is in the shade Night Thoughts. Here is Night Thoughts. I like that it's a shiny, comfortable formula. This is one of those that even though it is kind of glossy, even though it is a little plush, it doesn't actually leave my lip lines, which to me is a little astounding, especially with a deeper shade like this. Um, I tend to wear it with a lip liner and I tend not to wear it this heavily, but it is so forgiving on the lips. The other thing is after, you know, putting on lipsticks multiple times and removing them, putting this on feels like a comforting hug. It's like nourishing, although it's also offering that beautiful color. I think the thing that's really interesting about this, I feel like it's kind of similar in tone here, just a little bit more depth to this one. I have been in love with shades like this since the 90s. Shades that are glossy, that you can sheer out, that you can build up, that look good on a variety of skin tones, that have kind of like a little bit of a eggplant undertone with them without being too purple, um, that aren't too brown. This was kind of like the lipstick I was looking for and I used to have a lipstick almost exactly like this. And then of course it got discontinued. I was like, no, how dare you? So when this shade came out and I was looking at it in the bullet and I was like, 
I don't wear lipstick shades that dark. But then I reminded myself that this was the luxuriously lucent formula. It was buildable. It didn't have to be full force. It probably wasn't going to look that way on my lips. But this has been an absolute delight, and I reach for it all the time. This next shade is not even really a berry, but I wanted to show it to you because it is kind of purple leaning. It's very orchid in tone and I didn't know where else to put it. I swatched it with the pinks but it's not really a pink so we'll throw it in here. This is a new insanely saturated shade for this year called New Wave. Here is New Wave. It is very bright. It is very unapologetic and it leans a little bit more orchid. It's not really berry but it's not really a pink. It's not really a purple. It's interesting. I didn't know where else to put it so it's in this lineup but as you're looking at it compared to the rest it definitely reads a little bit more fuchsia here but to me instead of being like fuchsia fuchsia I think like hot pink. This definitely is more like a orchid hot orchid shade. This is beautiful and is very much a statement lip. This formulation is also a little bit different. It is a, a demi matte. It's super comfortable. It's easy to wear all day long. I like the way these feel. I love the way these wear. This shade makes me want to get Velvet Carnival. There are only four shades of Lisa's lipsticks that I don't have and that is one of them. But this is so much fun to wear and so stunning on. It's so attention grabbing. This next lipstick is one of my favorites. This is Velvet Myth. I love this color so much. This is kind of the one that I reach for on days when I want something that's bright but not a red. I love Velvet Myth. And if you're looking at it compared to the others, you know, it definitely leans a little bit more cherry or a little bit more maybe current in tone. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous shade of lipstick and the velvet formula is so comfortable to wear. Lasts really well throughout the day, easy to reapply over itself. It doesn't get bunchy, it doesn't get dry, it never uses and abuses my lips. They always feel great at the end of the day but this is a fabulous bright color. Got a little lip staining here, I'm not mad at it but let's try on the last two lipsticks I have for you. This next one is officially a red, <laughs> but this is one that I felt would be interesting to see swatched next to the rest of these deeper, kind of vampier tones. This is Velvet Jazz. So this is definitely not a berry tone, but I wanted to swatch it next to some of these really deep tones so you could see what it was like compared to if you were thinking, okay, how does it pair up next to Velvet Myth? Here is Velvet Myth, which is definitely more berry in tone, a little bit more kind of blackened cherry, and this is Velvet Jazz. Compared to the rest though, it is kind of like a deeper shade, but it's definitely not a berry. But for me, the intrigue was what does this shade look like next to Velvet Myth. Velvet Jazz is definitely a little bit warmer in tone, a little bit more red leaning, a little bit more brick, and this is what they all look like. The last shade I have for you is the darkest of all of Lisa's lipsticks that I own. This one's called Velvet Midnight. This is the lipstick that I wear the least. It's a beautiful shade, but on me it pulls almost black. And that's if I'm wearing it full force. I tend to wear this when I am wearing it very heavily blotted or just kind of blurred on with my finger. This is what it looks like. Um, it does have very much kind of like a eggplant aubergine lean to it. it. It definitely has more of that darkness. It's definitely cooler. It's a statement for sure. Let me blot most of this off and show you how I wear it. When I wear Velvet Midnight, this is the way I end up wearing it. I'll put on just a little bit. I'll share it around with my finger. You'll see that my finger has kind of got some extra color on there. And then I'll build up a little bit more kind of like on the outside corners right here at the edge of my lips. And then I'll just kind of bring that in. Sometimes I'll put like a little bit of Velvet Myth in the middle for just a little bit more color. So it pulls just a little bit more bright. 
not quite red, but it still keeps that berry look to it. This is one of those lipsticks that I use the most when I incorporate it with other shades. I love the depth and the darkness that it brings. I love that it's cool. I love that it has very much that eggplant lean to it, but I like it when I, you know, use it lightly or pair it with something else. The one thing that I'll tell you is most of the rest of my lipstick collection, I cocktail together. You know, these two lipsticks plus this liner and a little bit of that, you know, like I'm forever making up my own shade. And what's interesting is I almost never do that with Lisa's lipsticks. I feel like she has such beautiful, interesting shades that have that distinction, that subtlety, that nuance to them that makes them different from everything else. They are wildly unique amongst the rest of my lipstick collection. I feel like this is the only one, and I think it's because it's such a dark color that I cocktail it with something else to bring a little bit more brightness while still having that depth. But it's more just because it's such a stark look against my bare skin. Here are all of those shades. It starts here with Velvet Blush Lightly, Velvet Blush, Night Thoughts, New Wave, Velvet Myth, Velvet Jazz, and Velvet Midnight. I love that I have this many Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. I have so many, but I actually really enjoy reaching for them. In the spring and summer, I tend to reach for more of the luxuriously loosened. They're sheer, they're lightweight, they're much more forgiving. Winter and fall, I tend to reach for, you know, some of these darker kind of berry tones or the bright reds. I love that I have such a wide and varied collection amongst Lisa's different finishes and different shades. I am so impressed and I can't wait and I'm hoping crossing my little fingers and saying I've been a good girl this year that she releases a holiday collection or maybe even one for fall. <sighs> yes. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget, I am listing all of the other kind of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks by color family in the description box down below. I have a video of reds, one of pinks, one of nudes, they'll all be there. And the last one I have to do is kind of corals and peaches. That's coming next. Let me know if you have a favorite shade. If you just don't get into Lisa's lipsticks, but you love lipsticks in general, what is the one shade that you wish had not been discontinued? Because one of these is a fave because it's like an old fave that they don't make anymore. Or one that you cannot stop repurchasing that is like your holy grail that you always have. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.